So now we're looking at 3.3 and this is part four and we're gonna talk about the multiplication rule again, but this time we're gonna talk about it with independent events. And so again, this is gonna be one of those instances where knowing something about the situation beforehand ends up changing how we think about the problem and then what it is exactly that we do. So we need to remember a couple of things. One, we have the multiplication rule, which is the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A. All right, so that's the first one, that's the multiplication rule. The second one is if A and B are independent, then the probability of B given A equals the probability of B. So if you remember, that's actually the definition of what it means to be independent. So we're gonna use that fact in order to actually be able to do some work with probability. So suppose the proportion or the probability that a randomly chosen American attended Disneyland is 0.13. So it's just a massive amount, okay? 13% of all Americans attended Disneyland. That's not true, it just made up a number. But, so let's say that that's the case. And suppose individuals attending Disneyland are independent. So the probability that I will attend Disneyland is going to be 0.13. The probability that somebody else that I don't know is going to attend Disneyland is 0.13. And while they're not technically independent, the size of the sample is so large, or the size of the population is so large, that any one person, you can just assume that their probability is going to be 0.13. So we're going to utilize that independence, okay? So let's say, for example, we want to know the probability, okay, that two randomly chosen people will attend Disneyland. Okay? Now, what we would normally do, that's person one and person two attend Disneyland. Normally what we do, right, is we'd have the probability that person one went And then we'll multiply using the multiplication rule by the probability that person two attended given that person one attended. So if we know what the likelihood is that person two will attend given that person one attends, then we can actually do this. The probability that person one attends is gonna be 0.13, but we're kind of unknown. This is kind of our unknown. We haven't been given that information. What we have been told though, is that these events are independent. So what that means, okay, is that probability that person two attends given that person one attended is equal to just the probability that person two would attend because the two events are independent. So what that means then is that we can just find out that this is gonna end up being 0.13, just like it would be if we didn't know anything about person one. So the probability that person one and person two attend equals the probability that person one attends times the probability that person two attends which is 0.13 times 0.13, okay? That's cool. So that's 0.13 squared and that's 0 0.017, somewhere around there, about 0 0.017, right? And why can we do that? Why is it that we're allowed to do that? It's because we know something about the events. So we're looking in here and we know that those two events are independent 
And since they're independent, that allows us to multiply them, use the multiplication rule, and not worry about this conditional probability over here. Instead, I just use the straight probability. But that's only because they're independent. So catch that. You need to know that the two are independent. Otherwise, you've got to use the standard multiplication rule. Okay, very important, very important that we first check off, are they independent? If they are, I can use this. If they're not, I have to use the standard rule. Now this becomes really cool because it allows us to do things like this. What's the probability that five consecutively chosen people will attend Disneyland? Now, each probability is independent. So consequently, knowing that person one, two, three, or four attended Disneyland is not gonna affect the probability that person five attends Disneyland. So what we're gonna get is the probability that person one attends times the probability that person two attends times the probability that person three attends times the probability that person four attends times the probability that person five attends, which gives us what we call the power rule. So that's 0.13 to the fifth. So since we know that people attending Disneyland is independent, what that allows me to do is it just allows me to take the probability of one of them to how many people that I'm looking for to go to Disneyland, or 0.13 to the fifth, okay? And, that will be to the fifth power. and so that's 0 0.0000, I mean like basically it's zero. That equals 0 0.0000, do we have three? Oh, All right, so what does it mean? Or what is it that we, we should get from this? So what we want to get is, is that when we're talking about multiplication, we want A and B, two or more events occurring. And what we know about those two events is that those two events or the more events are actually independent. Then instead of using the conditional probabilities, we can use the straight probabilities, okay? And what that'll allow us to do as an upshot is it'll allow us to use this power rule. This ends the video.